first part about the GRE that's sort of very different from any test is that it's a computer adaptive test. And what this means is it's sort of like a choose your own adventure or something. Basically, you start, and again, you guys probably know some of this stuff, but we're going to go through it. It has real implications for how you want it, like strategies for the test. The way you strategize for this test is different than you would strategize for any other test. And part of this comes from the computer adaptive part. So you, your, your score isn't based upon sort of like how many you get right, how many you get wrong. Your score, rather, is based on sort of like where you end up outside this matrix. And I'll clarify what I mean by that here. So you're going to get some question. Your very first question is going to be mid-level. I don't know what it is, maybe like 550 or something. I don't know. Let's say it's like, you know, a, let's say it's 500 level question. Um, you start, it's like right in the middle. If you get that question right, you're going to go on to a harder question. Say it goes up to 550. If you get that question wrong, you're going to go to an easier question. Say it goes, you know, 40. Right? Again, you get it right, you get it wrong, you get it right, you get it wrong. And you can see how this would sort of build this web coming out, right? And essentially what you're doing when you take the test is you're sort of like navigating a path through this space. Does that make sense? I'd say it like that. Um, Okay, and you're navigating a path through the space until you get all the way to the end, and let's say the question you end on is like 680, boom, that's your score, right? So that's what I mean when I say it's not some ratio of like what you get right and what you get wrong, it's where you end up at the end here. In fact, it's kind of weird because you can even get things wrong and get an 800 on the test. I missed two on the math, I got an 800. Um, so that's sort of strange, but it makes sense when it's like, oh, right, it's because essentially what they're looking for what the GRE, what your score is supposed to be based on is imagine there's some sort of hypothetical set of questions at every level, right? There's 680 questions, there's 700 questions, there's 720 questions, whatever. Um, your score is supposed to be based on that set of questions that you get 50% right and 50% wrong, right? Which is, again, kind of different and a little bit weird. And again, I mention these things because they're going to have important strategic implications. So, they're looking for the set of questions that you get 50% of them right and 50% of them wrong. Which means, if you're doing well, if you are where you should be, you're going to miss half the questions. Right? It's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, and the reason I say this is because you have to kind of go zen with missing questions. Not let it stress you out. Like, if you're taking a chemistry test and you start missing questions, you're going to start panicking. Right? Oh my god, I'm going to fail. This is the end. I'm totally in trouble. The point is here, it's designed so that at hit some ceiling point where you start failing. It's designed that way, don't let it freak you out, that'll get in people's heads. Like, oh, I'm missing them, and they'll freak out. Um, don't worry about it, it's okay to miss questions. Um, the other important implication of the way this thing is designed is the earlier the question, the more important it is for your score. They're not all weighted equally, right? So, um, and there's a couple ways you can sort of conceptualize this. One is basically, you could imagine that if you miss a few, you're, you're going to, you know, if these all sort of went up like this or whatever, if you miss the first few, like if you're here, you can still get back up. But if you miss some of the first five questions, you've already put a ceiling on how high you can get. You've already sort of cut yourself off from these top trails. Um, so the first five, the, the earlier questions are more important. And another way of thinking about this is, imagine you're at a 500 level. Like, let's say that you're sort of, hypothetically at, you know, this objective, you're a 720 verbal person, right? That's your score. 720, there's some sort of whatever that is. It doesn't really exist, but does that make sense? Let's say you're a 720 person. If you miss a 500 question, right, you're missing a whole question, right? When you get to the very end of the test, it's sort of, it already has you in a window, and it's just trying to sort of hone in on precisely where you fit in that window, right? So the last few questions, let's say you're like 720 person, so let's say at the very end, you end up in, you know, you're seven, they know you're like 750, between like 750 and 680, right? Now, given the fact that you're expected to miss half the questions at the 720 level, right? So you're going to miss 50% of the questions. Any question you're missing here is actually more like missing half a question. Does that make sense? Does the logic of that make sense? You're expected to miss them. So you're only expected to get half of them right. So if you miss a question, it's only sort of like missing half of a question. Whereas this would be like missing a whole question. Does that make sense? If you're 720, you should be getting 100% of the 500 questions right. You should be getting 50% of the 720 questions right. 
which means here you're missing a whole question. Every question you miss here counts as like minus one. Every question you miss here counts as minus a half. Anything in between would scale sort of accordingly. Does that make sense? Now, why is this important? This is incredibly important because what this tells you is you should really take your time in emphasis, emphasize sort of getting these first ones right, even if you have to guess on the last three. And it's really simple to see the math. Let's say you guess on the last three. Let's say you have to guess on the last four, and there's four options, right? Probabilistically, you're going to get one of them right, right? So you're going to get one if you're just guessing, right? Um, so there's only three that you're going to miss. And of those three, you should have only gotten one and a half right anyways, right? Because you're at that 50% level. So four questions, if you had to guess on four questions at the end, not that this is good and hopefully this won't happen, but if you had to guess on four questions at the end, sort of probabilistically, it's like missing one and a half questions. Which really isn't that bad, right? If, on the other hand, you breeze through this and you miss a couple of them, if you miss two here, you're already at two, you're already sort of above that level. So really focus. So I say, you know, triple check the first 10, double check the next 10, and the last 10, if you have time, check them, do, you know, do what you can. You don't want to spend all your time here, obviously. Um, but weight yourself to the beginning. That's really, really important.